When a neighborhood has many children in its public spaces, it's a major indicator that it is well designed as a people-oriented neighborhood. When designing a city for the most vulnerable group, the other users also thrive. This is why in three years, three universities, three commercial parties and seven cities work together towards a common goal to develop and implement bottom-up measures with children to achieve lasting behavioral change. To make neighborhoods more inclusive, active and child-friendlier. This is metamorphosis. All the metamorphosis partners aim to improve planning procedures in their cities and want to integrate them into their local SAMP. It might be a challenge to upscaling the results into broader implementation and large-scale deployments, but it is necessary, according to Mr. Ortiz. A challenge is that only we have a generation to respond to. Because if we don't do it right in the next uh, 60 years, and we are already doing it wrong for the last 50, we don't do it right, we are going to leave a heritage for the next generations. Those children that are going to inherit those cities, which are going to be unmanageable, extremely expensive to manage, low productivity, uh, social inequality, and, uh, and unsustainability. So really, we are building the urban world within this century. And the, uh, if we do it right or wrong, that will be there for the next two or three centuries. And that's why it's so important to involve children in active mobility. Children are uh, the future. And if you want to, uh, long, if you have a long-term view, you want to have long-term change, then you have to look into the future. And um, that would mean that you're mainly targeting uh, children as the um, stakeholders that uh, have to learn and learn about active mobility and be empowered to uh, be actively mobile. I just believe that children are, it sounded sound like a Michael Jackson song, children are the future, but I mean, it really, I mean, the children obviously are gonna in inherit this mess, uh, but using them as, as uh, inspiration, but also as tools, as you know, using their brains uh, in order to figure out how to make things better in our cities is incredibly, uh, important. So, um, not just because they're going to inherit this, but also because they are incredibly rational, logical humans, right? They haven't unlearned their rationality and logic. Lucia knows how to integrate the children's approach into policy. I always say that for successful implementation of uh, some policy, of the general sustainable mobility policy and measures, we need to have a national framework, a national policy, a national strategy, some state body that is responsible for this, and then it, is, it should be uh, incorporated in the sectoral policies, in the educational, in the universities, in the research uh, bodies and so on. I would say the emphasis in metamorphosis is on relatively soft measures. So there are some hard measures such as street closures, but a lot of the measures are about better, better information, training about uh, safe cycling, and those kind of things. Probably in an integrated transport policy, you might want to link that with some harder measures, particularly with respect to pricing of uh, car journeys, because currently cars are effectively free at the point of use. And I think many cities might move in the future towards considering some forms of urban road uh, user charging. And he's helping get a, a message of, about m a more sustainable uh, mix of uh, transport services in the city. For Graz, it was uh, the opportunity to do a lot of experiments especially as we have a cooperation partner, we had a festival. For them it was new to work with schools. For us it was new to work with schools. Uh, we uh, even made a design of uh, new bicycles where, where we use the bicycles to transform the public space. 
and also uh, it was a sometimes a hard fight but uh, we we showed the city look this is what it looks like temporary and we even achieved some uh, the, the planning for permanent change so that, that, that they experiment with a with a street where it's a pedestrian area for a few days and uh, then said ah it works and now uh, the plan is to transform this to a permanent pedestrian zone and that's also an aim of metamorphosis that we have this temporary experiments and then uh, we move to do something permanent to ensure that the metamorphosis thoughts planning procedures and ideas live onwards in the future planning of the cities the cities have implemented the knowledge in their own sum although the project will be finished uh, the cities will still work on and implement measures to create child-friendly neighborhoods. And I think that's something to be very proud of, because um, executing a measure is one, but making sure that it will last forever and that they will keep doing it and change the city forever is a very important thing. We tried out things uh, in, the, in the metamorphosis cities and uh, we describe it in our brochures or in our webinars or in various uh, what we call dissemination products so that people have easy access uh, to uh, how to do this so some cities made handbooks and it's all uh, because we, we, we tried really a lot of things and so you can find it on, on website and brochures and download things and of course it's also possible to directly contact the people of metamorphosis and ask them questions how they did it this is one of the main uh, tasks of the of european projects to inspire uh, other cities and i think it's very nice that all of us can uh, help them help the children to play outside or other stakeholder groups uh, and that's why we are doing promotional videos, inspiration uh, transfer and know-how transfer. It's about workshops, about webinars, about trainings, about uh, the, the, these video clips or uh, even incoming packages for expert tourists who want to learn from a certain city how to implement uh, a, a measure that helps to make the, the public space more child-friendly.